So today I'm checking out another second-hand graphics card I picked up from Facebook. It's the MSI Twin Frozer GTX 970 and it's a bit of a beast. What's up guys, my name is Carl and welcome to Tech Hunter. On this channel I check out a lot of PC hardware as well as other day-to-day -day tech to make your lives a little bit easier. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Based on the well-known Maxwell architecture, the GTX 970 launched on the 18th of September 2014, and four years later, it still holds up really well. It has 1,664 CUDA cores, has 3.5, <coughs> 4 gigs of VRAM, has 1140 MHz base clock, and boosts all the way up to 1279 MHz in OC mode. It also supports VR, Ansel, G-Sync, DirectX 12, 4K60, 4-way SLI, and only consumes 150 watts. This 150 pound card ticks a lot of boxes. I'm comparing this GTX 960 with an overclocked i7 6700K to give you some benchmarks later in the video. Current issues that are affecting the GPU market due to mining of cryptocurrencies and things like that. Older 900 series GPUs from Nvidia are perhaps the best area to shop for a GPU right now. A GTX 970 will perform similar to that of a GTX 1063 gig, a GTX 980 similar to that of a 1060 6 gig, and a 980 Ti will perform similar to a GTX 1070. And the latter is the reason I decided to purchase a 980 Ti after their price reductions when Nvidia launched the GTX 1080 and 1070 a few years ago. I got a similar performance for around 80 to 90 pounds less than a 1070. If you have a look at this table I found online the other day, check the link in the description to read that article, but just take a quick look at the prices of graphic cards now and just how much some of them have increased over the time, uh, like the likes of the 1060 and the 1070. They've doubled in price. But that's enough negativity. Let's get back to this 970. Before I bought my 980, 980 Ti, I actually had a 970 myself. I paid around £270 for it, brand new. Although mine was a Gigabyte model and this is an MSI model, it will perform very similar and the Twin Frozen design looks a lot cooler in my opinion. The black and red design for some may conflict with their build colours, but luckily for me, I feel that it looks really at home in my case. As far as inputs are concerned, this GTX 970 has got it all covered. Capable of 4K60 over its HDMI 2.0 port, as well as two more DVIs and a DisplayPort 1.2. You can have up to four monitors connected simultaneously. It needs a six pin and an eight pin connector to keep it juiced up. And it's a fairly long card measuring at 27.7 centimeters. It's still shorter than my 980 Ti. The twin frozer design from MSI also offers reduced temperatures with MSI claiming that it should run at around 67 degrees and I never really saw it get much hotter than that, maybe 68 or 69, as well as offering fan stop technology so when the GPU isn't in use or not really doing uh, very demanding tasks, the fans don't need to spin which keeps your system nice and quiet. It also has some LED lighting which can be controlled in the MSI gaming app it's just between breathing or flashing and those kind of things. It's only basic white, no RGB on this card. It's a little bit too old for that. Right, so that's enough chit chat. Let's look at some benchmarks and see how well this four year old, I mean, three and a half year old card is holding up with today's games. Right, so now you've seen the results, the GTX 970 handles most games really well at 1080p and well beyond that in a lot of games. I kind of knew what to expect having owned one of these before, but it's nice to know that during times like now with a decent graphics card is hard to find, the old 900 series GPUs hold up really well. 
averaging the likes of over 120 FPS in GTA 5 on very high settings, as well as over 140 FPS in all of the eSport titles other than PUBG, but that's just terribly optimized, as well as around 80 and 90 in even some of the newer games. This GTX 970 is a great case for high refresh rate gaming. So if you save some money on your GPU now, use your extra cash to get a nice high refresh rate monitor, you could do that. Then when GPUs are out again and when the price of them normalize again, you'll have a great display to try out that newer card off. VR is also an option with this card. I tried it out with my Oculus Rift and it didn't really notice too much difference between my 980 Ti and this 970, apart from when I tried out games like uh, Project Cars 2. That was a little bit less enjoyable. It didn't look as clean and uh, well cut. But if I was trying to build a gaming PC for a friend or a family member, I'd have no hesitation in using this GTX 970 inside. It's an absolute beast for 150 pounds. Realistically, it's about 50 pounds less than what a GTX 1060 should cost right now, but they don't cost that. And what are we supposed to do? And as a result, this GTX 970 seems like even more of a bargain. Is it worth the extra 100 pound more than I paid for the GTX 960 a few months back? Probably not, but I couldn't find another 960 for what I paid for it back then. So as a result, this 970 is a great all-rounder. It will play most games over 60 FPS, less demanding games and slash well-optimized games all over 100 FPS. And that type of power I'd recommend for most gamers. I'm a bit of a PC elitist in some ways, but in more ways I'm a realist. And I know what that for 150 pounds, I couldn't spend my money any better on a brand new graphics card. As always though guys, if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to click that like button down below. If you didn't click that dislike button, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought about today's video. And if you decide my face has not offended you, please do not hesitate to click that subscribe button. Thank you and goodbye.